I got into a little bit of a brawl. You might say that uh, blood has been shed, except that no blood has been shed, but you know, kind of close. You'll see that scarring has occurred. And this scarring has occurred because I attempted to learn how to curl my hair. No, not today, this is my natural hair. I was hoping to, you know, add a little oomph to my curl. I thought it could be fun. I thought it was gonna be easy. I watched videos on YouTube about it and alas, Curling my hair, not a strength of mine, not a natural gift. I'm gonna have to practice it more. And like the main character of the book we're about to talk about, I will overcome my demons, face my fears, and try, try again. everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Michelle and today we're going to talk about Rage of Dragons. Rage of Dragons has so much hype. People talk about it all the time. But you know what keeps coming up around the conversation of Rage of Dragons? Along with this conversation about it being amazing, it's also a book full of fights. Like literally, if you took out the fights, the book would be 50 pages long. It is mostly fights. Like if there is not a fight happening in the scene, you're gonna get a fight soon enough, don't you worry. There are very few scenes where there is not fighting. In fact, there were moments when I was reading and I was like, can we do this without, you know, cracking someone's skull open, breaking their neck, spilling their guts out on the floor? Is there a way to do this? Is there a way to write this without visually, graphically describing these things? But despite all that, despite all the violence, I still overall enjoyed the book. As I said in my 2021 goals video, one of my goals this year is to broaden my horizons outside of my little sci-fi realm. <laughs> one of my friends actually who has a booktube channel, I'm gonna link him up uh, above, link him up above. His name is Michael Knipp and when I first said that I was considering reading this or maybe I asked some questions about it, he straight up was like, you're probably not gonna like it. You don't really like fight scenes. That's pretty much all of what the book was. And I was like, you know what? You're probably right. But at the same time, he and I have also discussed the fact that when we want to understand something, we need to understand it. Like there is no stopping us once we've decided that we need to know something. And in this case, I needed to know, is violence everything? Are the fight scenes really enough to draw me away from a book that people have said over and over and over again is amazing? So in this video, I wanna talk about what drew me into the book, what kind of took me out of the book so that you guys can decide if the book is something you wanna pick up because I have a feeling a lot of people that watch my channel would actually really enjoy this book. But without further ado, Let's talk about Rage of Dragons, but before we do, please go ahead and click like and subscribe to stay part of this channel, stay part of this family, and join in on more conversations about books, personality, and more. First and foremost, what is this book about? I keep saying violence, fights, dragons. What is it actually about? Well, at the end of the day, the main story is about a character named Tao who's a late teen who's trying to become a uh, soldier because he's fueled with this need for vengeance. That's, that's the gist of the story. Uh, there's some really cool elements such as the world building. The world building is actually really phenomenal. One of the things that is very unique about it, which I, I wish was stressed a little bit more because it would have intrigued me further. Personally, I like reading settings that are a little atypical. I'm not a huge fan of medieval fantasy. Like, can we please, go into a different area. I'm not a huge fan of those kind of worlds. And this world is completely different. This world is African inspired. All the names sound African. All the people have dark skin, different levels of dark skin. I listened to this predominantly as an audiobook. I did read the ebook a little bit, but mostly I listened to this as an audiobook. And one of the things I really liked about the audiobook is that the narrator used a heavy kind of African accent when he was doing the different voices for people, which actually immersed me more into the world and I really, really loved loved the world immersion. There's also this element of a spirit demon world, which I think is so cool. There is a world that is supernatural and it's full of demons and it's 
amazing. I, I want more of the book in that and I'm really hoping that the next couple of books spend more and more time in that world because that is like the best part about this book. With that being said, let's talk about the second best element of this book and the reason that I pushed through all the way to the end, despite not really feeling all that inclined on reading about people getting dismembered. Evan Winter has done a phenomenal job creating a strong theme that permeates the entire story. It starts out in the very beginning, you can feel the sort of molding of the starting of a theme, and as the story progresses, the theme becomes more and more clear, and the way that he has written it, with the main character being so completely disinterested in the theme, that we get to explore it more because we want to. Every time a scene comes up which is enforcing the theme, we want to, we want more of it. I don't know. I feel like it was masterfully done the way that he incorporated theme into the story. And these are the kinds of themes that draw me into reading literature to begin with. Like if I'm going to read a book, I want a theme. And that's one of the greatest things about this book. So despite it being fantasy and despite it being a world without technology, I'm still drawn into the story because of the themes. And despite all the fighting and the violence and the gore, I'm brought in further and further into the book because of the theme. And I think that I'm really happy with the fact that I picked up this book despite all that. But I do need to get into a couple of criticisms because if I don't talk about this, especially given the nature of my channel overall, what's the point of me even bringing up this story to you guys? So the really important thing for us to discuss for just a moment is the character and the character development that happens in Rage of Dragons. As somebody who is primarily a character-driven reader and a psychology enthusiast, a person who loves MBTI, a person who loves talking about all things psychology, there are some misses in this book, most specifically with the side characters. Now, we've ha I've had some discussions with people on the internet who say that there are just different ways that he uses character development. It is true that he uses a lot of the fight scenes to create a non-verbal understanding of these different characters' personalities. That being said, there are three of them who are supposed to be very unique individuals who have sort of become the same. Now, I know that one is the strongest, one is the smartest, and then there's the other one. Uh, but that's about where the depth stops with my understanding of their character and their motivations. And for me, understanding the motivations of my characters that I'm reading about is incredibly important. We get hints of their motivation, we get the sliveriest sliver of information as to what their motivations are, but it's not as explored as you might want, especially if you're a character reader. That being said, the main character is incredibly deeply explored, and there is a side character, Jayed, and a side character, Ken Kenton, what's his name? Kellen, Keller, Kellen, I think it's Kellen. The main character is very well developed and actually does have to sort of overcome his blind spots. He's forced to deal with things that he doesn't necessarily want to deal with. And there are two side characters who have very strong, clear motivations, one of which being Jayed and the other one being this character Kellen who comes in later in the story. Both of them have very clear and strong motivations that are described in a way that is enough for us to attach and understand their motivations. In the approach of the main character Tao and his worldview and being able to make sense of that through the story, I'd say that it's like a 10 out of 10. I feel like Tao is a real person. The problem being, I don't understand enough of the other characters to really feel like I could give Evan Winter credit for amazing characters. Tao is amazing, but the side characters lose a little bit of that amazingness. And for me, it was a little bit hard to get behind Tao's motivation. 
But I don't think we were ever supposed to fully empathize with his motivation. I think that we're supposed to come along with him on the ride so that we can understand the world and the bigger picture going on. Because to me, this story seemed a lot more about the bigger picture than the smaller character Tao, except that in some way it seems like Tao is going to play a pretty big role in the big picture situation that is going to come up in the later books. That is my belief based on what I have read. Not a guarantee. I haven't read the second one yet. I don't know when I will. Hopefully this year, maybe next year. Really just depends. Overall, despite not really loving the the violence and the fight scenes, which are, like I said, most of the book, I loved the themes and the main character of Tao, and it is absolutely a story I am glad that I read. And if I were to go on Goodreads and give it a rating right now, I would give it four out of five stars, mostly because it wasn't 100% my cup of tea, and I could have lived without a little bit of the violence that I had to take in and put into my mind because now I cannot unsee some of the things that I saw. But overall, I really, really enjoyed this book and I think that it is a fantastic telling of this story. You can tell that the author has put a lot of work into this and I have watched a few interviews of him where he has said that basically his pre-work for the book is as much words as the actual book, if not more, he has like a full binder. You know who else has a full binder every time he writes a book? Scott Ziegler. Scott Ziegler is one of my favorite authors. Anyway, I digress. I enjoyed Rage of Dragons. If it's something that you feel like you'd like to check out, go ahead and check that link down in the description below to get yourself a copy. But if you're not gonna read it, that's fine too. Uh, if you have read Rage of Dragons though, I would love to know your opinions down below in the comments so we can talk about it a little bit. If you wanna talk a little bit more about it, go ahead and check out the Discord. We talk about personality, books, all kinds of things. We talk about all kinds of things. It is not subjugated just to personality. It is all kinds of things. So if you wanna check it out, go ahead and join the Discord. But with that all being said, go ahead and like and subscribe if you have not already. And I hope that you have a beautiful, amazing, fantastic day. Bye.